Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another Fago video, which actually has been a while since I did a Fago video because I've been doing so much 13 nights of Halloween. But it's alright because now there's something for me to actually talk about because they just announced that they are doing the revival for Gouda Gouda. So Gouda Gouda is coming up, and that also means that as soon as this ends, the new Gouda Gouda starts, because that's how it was in, J J in Japan. So today's video is going to be talking about the event, because there's actually something I need to talk about in the event, and then the actual units that come with it, and then the, what's likely to come right after it, because it's pretty funny. We actually do know. So anyway, that's going to be today's video. Hope you like it. If you do, feel free to leave a like, and let's get into it. So, this is, I'm going to be using the site. Why did I do that? I just realized. <laughs> One moment. Uh, I was not done with this site, so the event starts on the 26th and goes into the 8th. This is important to take note of because on Japan, when this event came out, it went a little something like this. One moment, as I go to uh, event list. Um, this is how it went for in Japan. Um, it went this Gouda Gouda event, which was November 3rd to November 17th, and then on the 17th, maintenance. It was Gouda Gouda close call. So that's what's likely going to happen here. Though depending on your time zone, it might be a different start date. Like I think for me, it does say uh, the 8th, but then it maintenance starts on the 8th and then the event won't, the maintenance won't be done until the 9th and that's officially when it would start for me. So like always, you're going to have to check on the time yourself. But yeah, that that's, uh, that's as far as the time goes. Now I can close this site and go here. So... This is the Himiko um, event, which was really nice. The reason I have to talk about the event mechanics is because there's actually something tied to the event that you need to take note of. So first of all, here's how the event structure goes. I've actually played this so I can say it. Basically, you're trying to get a bunch of resources. With the resources themselves, you just start building... Uh, you use them to complete reconstruction quests, which will then lead to new main quests, and then certain facilities are reconstructed, there will be like harvesting, and the harvesting is actually really nice because you can just get a buttload of QP, and they can be repeated throughout the entire event. And then there's also the obvious stuff that's always clear mission. Now here's the thing that you need to take note of and why you should be able, you should start this event as soon as possible. Usually I'm someone who likes to wait until the very last minute. You can't do this with this. The reason is, is because the second part of the event actually has a special raid. And raids in Fago, you have to catch them in the window that they released or you will never play them. That's just simply <laughs> the way it goes. Uh, I can't remember if this specific raid, let me see how... I assume, yeah, the, each mate, the raid health will be uh, 1 million, six, whatever number right here. So it'll need to have that many kills. And basically we together have to kind of beat them down. And I say we together have to beat them, but when in, on, in all honesty what we're doing is that we're competing with each other to get these materials. So... During the raid, these are what the raid bosses are going to have. This is the Blaze Nobu, uh, which is going to be Saber. And also, if you don't want any of this spoiled, I'm sorry, you're going to get this spoiled. Oh, also, you have to clear Fuyuki. I should have said that at the beginning. But anyway, <laughs> uh, for the Saber uh, Nobu, it has... Let me go to the final chart here. It has Spirit Root. It has Dragon Fangs. It has uh, uh, Saber Gems. And then it also drops material. So this is also a really good place to get material if you are just looking to get like stuff at the end. So you don't have to grind super hard at the beginning. You just need to get the bare minimum in order to unlock part two. And then you can actually go crazy and whichever nobu you plan to like grind like crazy, you'll get plenty of material for them. But that's not all. You also have a chance to get a bunch of QP, which is 150k QP, 350k, uh, 350k QP, or just straight up 3 million if you beat them. Uh, and of course, all the raid bosses are one singular raid boss. It's going to be one Blaze Nobu, which is going to be a saber. Uh, they all have their own special techniques, but yeah, let me just go over the materials for them real quick. There's Archer Nobu, which Archer Nobu has... As a drop rate, it has homunculus babies, and it has secret gem of bows, and then it also has the dawn light reactor core, and then it has all the archer gems, um, while also dropping these two materials right here, but the same QP um, amount is the same. 
You can also see here that in terms of if you're looking to grind, obviously if you're looking for materials, it's easier to do it on the hardest difficulty, which is what a vast majority of people are going to be doing. But if you can't handle the VAD, the hardest of them all, you can do the second to least, which will drop a little, has a chance to drop less of the main materials and stuff like this, but they will give you plenty of the material here. A little bit less QP as well, but it's, it should be fine, you know. Grind with what you think you're actually able to handle. <laughs> Either way, you should work out pretty well. The Lancer Nobu will have the Bloodstone tier, the Ghost Lantern, and then Lancer Gems. Go here. Ryder has Stakes. It has the Egg. So this one's dying immediately. Ryder Gems. But funny enough, it doesn't have the Golden Ryder. That has to be a mistake. Sometimes this site is a little bit funky with the way that they structure things. I'll say that much. <laughs> it could be a little bit... I don't know why Ryder feels oddly off boy the other one, but maybe maybe that's just the thing. But either way, this one had... The reason is because this one has the egg. Nobody knows what these other nodes drop because they immediately went to the hardest difficulty to grind the egg. And that's the only thing that they matter. Obviously, the egg, if you aren't aware, uh, the Genesis egg is a very hard thing to kind of get. As you can see here, it's dropped in only really some of the higher end Lost Belt stuff. And then the servants who need them are a buttload. And they typically need a lot, like usually 45. 45 of a gold material is pretty dang a lot. So... Good to keep in mind. Genesis Egg, this one's gonna die almost immediately. You'll be lucky to get in a bunch of fights with Ryder if you're there early. Uh, next, we got the Light Nobu. Funny enough, I can actually just stop here because this is all they have. The Cursed Beast, uh, Codalist, and the Gunpowder, and then it has Caster Gems. And then we go to Assassin, it has Black Tallow, and it has the Crown of Radiant Silver, and then it has Assassin Gems. They don't show it here, but it does in fact have the Assassin Gems. Berserker has the Primordial Langu and the perm Permafoss Ice Crystals and then Berserker Gems. I think this one will likely be the next one to go pretty quickly because I think this material can only be found in Anastasia and then the servants who need it need like a lot of them if I remember correctly. And 36. I mean Scotty needs them and Scotty's a support so that's why I'm like oh yeah that <laughs> that's why I have such vivid memories of having a pain in the ass to get them, even though this is not regular Scotty, this is in fact Summer Scotty. Uh, summer, uh, regular Scotty should be down here. Yeah, for a total of 55, 10 for Ascension and 45 for skills. Uh, Nero needs 72 for that final, <laughs> for the append skill, which is kind of crazy if you want to get her append skills in there. Oh man. And then, of course, they're also used for costumes and stuff. But I would assume this one would be the second one people would go for. But it also kind of depends. So, yeah, that's the raid bosses. Obviously, on the easiest difficulty, you still will get the um, the chance to get them. But on the harder difficulties, you'll just have a chance to get more and better stuff, basically. I'm also not 100% sure about what I said earlier. So, disregard I, where I said, now that I see how off putting everything is, I assume this is actually the same. You actually will get the max amount for playing on the hardest difficulty. That might have just been me going here. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure because I only grind on the hardest 40 AP cost ones. Uh, so forgive me if I was uh, wrong in, in that instance. But yeah, raids. They're very important. They don't last very long. You basically have the window of when they're up and that's it. If I were to take a guess just based off of the materials that drop here, Ryder Nobu dies first. Berserker likely dies second, and then from there... Hmm... Hmm... I'm not sure. Maybe Lancer because of the spirit? I feel like this is a weird one because I feel like maybe it's just because it shows how old my account is where I feel like a lot of the gold ones aren't that interesting outside of the egg. Like, I have plenty of the black tallow, but I think maybe the circlet will be something that more people will kind of go to because it is a newer, um... Uh, a newer material that you kind of need so I could definitely see that one being grinded a little bit and yeah You need like 72 if you want Galatea, but also it's Galatea. So only the most dedicated will be getting that 64 yeah, okay. I could definitely see myself grinding this one after Ryder goes down because I definitely need I think I'm good on the frost, but I definitely need more of this more of this for sure um, Bullets I think are actually used with Vich if I remember correctly if that's the case, then... Yeah, okay, bullets go next. <laughs> because Vich uses them, so... 
And you need a lot of the bullets. I just now looked at it. Jesus Christ, 216 from Anastasia. That is uh, insane. 216 for the uh, pen skill for Hijikata. I could definitely see this one going next, to be honest. I might actually need to look and see if I have plenty of bullets. I think I maybe have a thousand bullets, but I actually don't know. Um, stakes. All oh, stakes are actually... But again, that's Ryder, so that one's going down. But yeah, if I, I the rest of them will probably be around the same-ish, and it will depend on what kind of materials people are looking for, but Ryder will definitely be the one that gets down, taken down immediately, followed by Berserker. The reason is, is that Berserker actually would be the easiest to fight out of all of them, because it's actually pretty hard for some of the newer players to have uh, servants that can one-shot Nobus. Um, it's not, it's not enough to three turn them, you one shot them, um, and they have a lot of health, but chances are they'll have a good single target and they'll be able to take down the Berserker pretty easily, because it's a Berserker, but, yeah, raids, very important to this, uh, event, so you should immediately get part one done as soon as you can to get it in time for the raid. When should the raid start? Let me see if I hear you, they should show it here. So, prologue to the main quest is right at the start, and then the epilogue here. Actually, they don't show where... I assume ep epilogue is where you'll get it, but I'm not 100% sure. Hmm. Maybe if I like that raid. No, they don't say the raid. Interesting. But I assume sometime it would actually be released with this, but I, I don't know. 100%. It would start this, let me see, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We'll see when you beat it. It should tell you right when you beat it when it should start. It doesn't typically start right out. It would probably be a week after it starts, but, you know, we'll, we'll see on that one. Next, there's a costume for Okita related to this event, which you can get right here. And there we go. Uh, we can talk about the units now. I spent so much time actually talking about the event, but we can talk about the units now. This is going to be the banner. It's going to feature Himiko, Okita, uh, Hijikata, the Pickle Man, and Saito, everyone's favorite Muppet. Uh, Saito's on all-time rate up, so Saito is, I think, a pretty solid saber. So I'm not going to go over him because there are three five-stars to go through. But he is limited, so and he is a Guda Guda, so he is always going to have some form of bonus because he's a Guda Guda character. I remember in the story, I really like Saito, so Saito might be good. I may as well just look at what kind of NP he has to tell you what kind. Deals one damage to one enemy, so there you go. If you're in the need for a single target um, arts uh, dude, then he can be your dude for that. I don't actually know how good he is, but I assume he should be solid. Um... Next, let's go into the actual units. Talking about single target sabers, we'll go into Kiki Okita. She's a limited. Okita is a two quick, one arts, two buster uh, with her saber, with the first skill being the Shukukuchu B. Increases <coughs> his own uh, quick performance for one turn. Grants self an on attack activated buff for a single turn. Increases his own attack by 20% for one turn. When normal attacking, this activates first. It's a 50% quick up. Very nice, and only lasts for one turn, but what, that's usually fine for what she's doing. The reason is because she's single target, or also because she's an old unit, so they kind of have to keep it 50%. It's really weird, they're very inconsistent about what servants can keep the 50% and which ones don't. Okita can't, but it's fine because Okita's good, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, the Peerless Blade A, which is a uh, upgrade from uh, Weak Constitution A. The Peerless Blade A increases her uh, critical star absorption for a single turn, increases crit damage for one turn, and then charges on NP gauge. The absorption is 1000, the crit damage is 50%, and the MP up is 30%, and that's a cooldown of 5, so very nice. Third skill is the Eye of the Mind False A, grants self evasion for a single turn, increases on crit damage for 3 turns, 40% crit damage, 6 turns, so if you combine both of them, that is 90% crit damage, though it only lasts for a single turn. Uh, before it goes back to just 40% because this last uh, three turns But there you go. That's her skills her passive skills are magic resistance a and writing e her third append skill is an anti-avenger attack damage aptitude and her noble phantasm is the rank minus anti-unit mystic sword the Muyo Sando Zuki the Avidia three-stage thrust hits three times uh, is quick like I said before 
Deals damage that ignores defense buffs to one enemy. The damage is 12,000 at MP level 1 and 2,000 at MP level 5. Um, and then it reduces their defense for three turns. Uh, the charge level at level 1 is 30% down, and if you get it all the way to the final charge, it is 50%. And that is Okita. Um, Okita is a very good unit. She's a very good single target uh, servant. She is quick related. It shouldn't be that hard for you to get her to NP again, even though she has a single arts card. She does so. She has a five hit quick or quick card. It is able to very easily loop it together and get it done. Typically, I think you would probably even want to have some kind of um, bomb so you could have a bunch of stars at the first turn. If you don't do that, then obviously you hit her with the MP. You hope to have the two other quicks, or maybe an arts and a quick or something like that. Uh, and then finish it off with a quick and a bust. A buster at the end would be, I guess, the ideal to go for. But in general, she's a good single target. For quick sabers, she's definitely one of the better ones, at least on NA. I'm not 100% sure on JP because I'm not 100% sure what the next single target saber for quick is. Um, but she's been in the game since the beginning. She hasn't gotten a buff to... They've buffed her worst skills. Like, obviously, this used to be just 50%, and even then, that's still pretty okay. But they uh, buffed it so she gets a little bit more. Uh, her second skill was just crit star absorption, but now she gets crit damage with it, as long w along with a MP gauge uh, charger, which really helps for quick units if they do not... Because sometimes quick units can fail to um, get the MP to level 100 to 100%. Uh, with three hits, you shouldn't be able to get it with the NP unless you deal a lot of damage on that first hit. Uh, but you should be able to get it with the two follow-up quicks, because that will be 10 hits of quick, and that should be enough to get you to end full NP, I think. And if you don't get it there for whatever reason, then you can use this on the next follow-up turn and get it back. Cooldown of 5 is very good. Yep, she's a early, early SSR unit, and she's been basically pretty solid since the beginning. Always pretty nice. At least I think so. Um, and that's Okita. And again, she's in every single Gouda event. So she will always be a bonus servant for Gouda events. It's, I feel like there's a little bit more of a premium on Gouda servants. Because Gouda servants will literally always be uh, some kind of bonus in the next Gouda Gouda event. It's never failed that. Like, they haven't ever been like, you know what, for this one event, Okita doesn't get a bonus. No, she always gets a bonus. <laughs> so, kind of nice to have those units just on hand for that. Next, we got Hijikana, the pickle man himself. Hijikata is a Berserker, who is uh, supposed to be a Berserker Gorilla, but he only has two Busters, one Arts and two Quick. I don't think he's actually supposed to be a Gorilla, but he does have an Arts, uh, not an Arts, a Buster MP. First skill, the Demon of the Battlefield B increases the party's Buster performance for three turns and then increases their Crit Star generation rate for three turns. Nice. 20% uh, Buster, 20% Star rate, cooldown of five. His second skill, which was eventually buffed into Curious Journey B+, which is the, fur the Furious Journey, removes own debuffs, recovers own HP, and then grants self a gut status for one time, three turns, revive with a single HP, stackable with other guts. And I do have to mention, before this, Hijikunda did not have a guts, and this is going to be very important. This is on a cooldown of 5, which is very good for guts. And especially for Hijikata, who will always be on the brink of death. <laughs> Third skill. Laws of the Shinsengumi EX. Increases on crit star absorption for three turns. Increases on crit damage based on own remaining HP for three turns. Crit damage formula equal 20% plus 80%. One current HP equals to slash of the max HP. Um, absorption is 4,000. The cooldown is 5. His only passive skill is Madness Enhancement D+. His third uh, pendant skill is an anti-alter ego critical attack chance resistance. And his noble phantasm is the Shinsengumi Immortal Sincerity Buster. C++ anti-unit. Five hits. Deals damage to one enemy. The damage is 800% at level 1. 12,000 at level 2. And, the, and it has a very, very bad increment of 1,000, 11,000, 11,050, and 12,000. But there's a reason for that. He then also, on his overcharge, deals further damage to them based on own remaining HP. The additional damage formula equals multiplayer based on the overcharge 1 minus current HP to max HP. The charge at level 1 is additional damage is 800%. 
and if you get it all the way to the final charge, it's a chance to getting an additional 12,000%. So what does this formula mean? Uh, based off of my using of Hijikata, this is what it means. If you want the full, the full 800% damage to be added, um, you need him to be at 1 HP. If he is not at 1 HP, you are getting significantly less of everything. So Hijikata's entire game ga gameplay is based around him being at 1 HP and living at 1 HP. And that makes him, and if you're able to do that, he can do a lot of damage, especially if you have, um, especially if you have, uh, <laughs> If you have the skill to use him, I'll say. I personally have an MP2 Hijikata, and Hijikata typically dies for me. Though he does, he usually is able to <laughs> use his um, singular Noble Phantasm attack and then deal a lot of damage and then typically die afterwards. He is much better after they gave him this buff. Uh, it's just not enough. <laughs> he needed as good as this like stackable guts is, which is very good. He actually needed it to be that it was infinite, and that there should have been no turn cooldown, and it should have just been grant self guts as one time stackable with other guts, revive at one HP. Because here's what ends up happening a lot: is that this goes away, and then he dies <laughs> because he is a berserker. And he is not built to live. He is built to try and help and try and try and kill. The problem is, is that he's just not that great at doing it. Um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot better berserkers, uh, berserkers and Buster units who are built around power. Um, just hate doing big power dumps. Like for example, um. Oh man, Golden is very good at it. Golden is, uh, I think the reason that they don't buff Golden is because Golden is literally the poster boy for showing off huge NP damage. He's just able to do so much um, in one single blow. <laughs> like, I always see the ja uh, Japanese videos of, of Kintoki somehow doing like a crazy buttload amount of damage to, pa to not Passion Lip, to Kimporotia for some reason. And it's crazy. So I can say from this experience that Hijikata is maybe not the best unit in the world, but he is at least a unit you can try and figure out and try and mess with, and if that's something that sounds interesting to you, then I would say you should probably... He, hey, maybe live dangerously, live Moss, and do your best with him, but I've never been able to make him that effective working. Like, even when I did challenge videos with my brother, neither one of us ever really tried to use Hijikata even though I have him in B2 because none of us want to deal with his actual gimmick <laughs> and also the gimmick will typically lead him to die <laughs> he will not live very long but anyway that's Hijikata and the final unit is Himiko Himiko is a ruler she has one quick two arts two buster her first skill is the shamanist charisma b increases party's attack for three turns grant party eight star crit star regeneration buff for three turns uh 20 attack cooldown of five uh which is important because he is buster and i'll say even with actually i haven't used hitchcock with vich maybe vich might be able to get around with him being able to get his buster back like buster back but then the problem is with vich is that vich is not built to live Vich is very much a you <laughs> you kill right then and there or Vich will slowly die because she has no protective capabilities whatsoever. But anyway, back to Himiko. Increases own buster performance for three turns, increases own damage against demonic enemies for three turns, grants self invincibility for a single turn. The buster damage is 30%, the versus demonic damage is 50%, and the cooldown is 6. The third skill is the Oracle's Brilliance A, charges on MP gauge, increases on crit star absorption of buster cards for one turn, and then increases on crit star uh, critical damage of buster cards for one turn. The MP is 50%, the buster absorption is 500%, and the buster crit damage is 100%. So that for that one singular turn with her two buster cards, she's going to be dealing a lot of damage, but she kind of needs it to offset the fact that she is a ruler, <laughs> so they typically don't do that much damage. Passive skill, Magic Resistance A, Territory Creation A, Primitive Body A. Uh, third skill is an Anti-Foreign Attack Damage Aptitude. Her Noble Phantasm is the Seishan Katadori Kyo. 
the Eternal Mirror that models the Celestial Bodies, increases party's buster performance for 3 turns, overcharges party's MP by 2 stages for 1 time 3 turns. Her At MP level 1, this gives 30% buster, and at MP level 5, she's giving 50% buster off of this. And then her overcharge is increased party's critical damage for 3 turns. At charge level 1, she is giving 50% crit damage. And if you get this all the way to the final charge, it is 100%. Um, though technically speaking, the next time you use this NP because of her own NP's first overcharge, this does not apply first because it doesn't say it applies first. But the next time you do it, by two stages, you'll be giving everyone 75% crit damage. Um, which is hilarious. <laughs> this is Himiko. I love Himiko. Himiko is an awesome buster support. She is obviously not on the same level as someone. It actually helps a little bit to have Vich and stuff like that. Um, but obviously if you're looking at the top of top tier buster servants, she probably isn't in that category, but she is really, really, really damn good. She's a lot of fun to use. I've always had a lot of fun using her. I use her for, um... If I want to grind hands, because it's very easy for a ruler to not have to deal with type advantage, and she just takes down that single target thing at the end. Either she does it, or she busts, uh, she increases everyone's buster performance by such a large amount. Uh, I have her NP level 1, so it's 30%, but then she also gives them overcharge, which is also pretty nice when you use it in tandem with Morgan. So typically what I do is I use Himiko, Morgan, and then one other servant that is typically buster. I Himiko to use her... Um, I use her first skill 1 to start generating crit star uh, generation, and then I use her second uh, second skill as well. Typically, I just use it to use it. And then I use her Noble Phantasm, and then on the other overcharge, I use someone else's. Typically, is Morgan so that the next person can have overcharge, though now that I think about it. Yeah, fun, funny enough, though, now that I think about it, what do you want to do? No, because then Morgan will kill everything, so you won't be able to use Himikos. <laughs> so that will allow you to go into the next phase, and then the second unit will clean up the second wave, and then on the third wave, you should have so much crit stars. And you should be dealing so much that you should be able to take down whatever you have, either with Himiko using her third skill, or just in general with any of your other two buster units, uh, Morgan herself or someone else. Morgan has the ability to also spam out some quick NP stars and stuff like that. And that's just an example of how I've used my Himiko. There's plenty of <laughs> there's plenty of other team builds that you can think of, and I think that's kind of the fun part about her is that it opens up a kind of different kind of way of team building. Uh, obviously if you have her at MP level 5, this ability to just give 50% MP on a buster is kind of crazy on an MP, is kind of insane. <laughs> it's really nice, it's really good. Uh, I, n I don't know anyone with an MP5 Himiko, I wouldn't mind an MP5 Himiko, but I ain't got MP5 Himiko money. So if you do have that, feel free to tell me about it, but otherwise I don't see anyone ever talking about that. But anyway, that's Himiko. I think she's a really good unit. Now, should you summon on this banner? Um, I think Himiko is actually kind of worth having. But if you're not someone who cares that much about the potential team building that you can do with her or buster units, then I guess it's a easy skip for you. Okita is also really nice. If you like Okita, it's worth getting Hokita. Uh, Hokita. Okita. And Hijikata is a unit in which maybe I should give another chance and maybe get his skills. I... <sighs> Just such a hard investment to get him to MP level 10 and then just <laughs> to be disappointed <laughs> when it turns out my misgivings about him were still correct. But anyway, that is Gouda Gouda. It's the next event coming up. I wish you guys the best of luck if you do end up summoning. If you end up summoning, feel free to tell me about it. Uh, I will say also On the Horizon is obviously going to be this 24 million download campaign. And then also after this Gouda Gouda event, it's this Gouda Gouda event. So if you are interested in any of the... The units here, which I am with Sakamoto Ryomo, Ryomo, Ryoma, and or if you're interested in uh, No Okoni, or even getting Izo and Mori, because Izo and Mori are not featured in the other banner, but they are featured here. So that's another thing. Believe it or not, Izo and Mori do a lot to get people to like summon on a banner. Also, I forgot, go and do the friend point summon because o uh, Nobukatsu is in it and this is the only way to get him and if you don't get him this way, you have to wait until they decide to put him back in the friend <laughs> the friend banner. He's only really ever released during Guda Guda time, so make sure to get him. 
And yeah, that's the video for today. Thank you very much for watching. I on then I'll not even I forgot, man. There's another banner because there's a banner that releases in the middle of this banner, which is the um, the 24 million download campaign. And then not even thinking about that, there is still Melusane, which is a month after this. So be smart, do your best. I'll see you guys in the next video, and peace out. Goodbye, everybody. Till next time, there's Kentucky that I was talking about. Go for Kentucky if you're wanting a big buster guy. That's my general rule of thumb. Anyway, that's it. Oh, yeah, Hijikata also doesn't have an MP chart. No, he does. No, he doesn't. I just read him. Never mind. Goodbye, everybody.